What is up everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope all of you guys are having just an absolutely amazing day and for those that are new here, well I'm Jacob and welcome to my crazy jungle. Today we had to rush Sid the Sloth to the vet because we noticed that she had some kind of a growth on her nipple. We caught her, we took her in and we did a full exam to get to the bottom of what is going on. Not only did we go to the vet with our sloth but we also got to feed and hang out with Noir my black jaguar and also check up on the tortoises from the abandoned zoo. Today's this video is action packed and you guys are not going to want to miss out on it. So without further ado, let's go and check up on some tortoises. All right, where is this big tortoise? But look at the sky right now. This is looking insane. It's a beautiful day here in South Florida. Look at this. It's looking amazing out. And right here we've got our tortoise friend, Schmedley, the other tortoise from the abandoned zoo. This is one of the friendliest Sulcata tortoises ever. This guy is a real dinosaur. He just wants to have his neck pet. Now, he is not nearly as big as the other one, but he is much friendlier. What's up, buddy? How are you? This guy is super sweet, which a lot of Sulcatas are not sweet. A lot of the Sulcatas actually want to ram you and try and attack you, but this guy just wants to come over. He wants to have his shell scratched. He wants to have his head scratched. But we got to go find our other buddy over here, and he is right here. I think I see him right past the wall so it's really important again that we put these visual barriers because if these two tortoises were to see each other they're going to start ramming at the wall to try and get each other but luckily this guy can't get over and neither can the other one but this guy's much bigger so i want you guys to see the difference here on what this one's going to do he might actually come over and try and get us but this is probably the biggest sulcata you've ever seen this is about a 250 pound sulcata tortoise what's up bud how are you but he's not nearly as nice. He actually wants to try and bite me. Okay, we're not gonna do that. What's up, bud? And you can see he's got these monstrous poops that are literally like the size of the palm of my hand. And all that fibrous material you see in his poop is actually all of the grasses that grow in here. So he's got this beautiful lush forest and we built him this really nice little house so he can get shade. Just like this, we got bamboo on this part and then underneath it, we actually got metal so he can fully get under here and get away from the rain. And when the winter time, we're gonna be hanging up a heat lamp or a heat panel there and we're gonna create a little door so you can actually go inside and stay nice and warm. The Sokatas are settling in and I'm so happy that we could give them the best possible home. All right, bud, we're gonna spray you down. So these Sokata tortoises, even though they're from Africa and from the desert, they love to be sprayed down with the hose. Right now, he's lifting his head out and they love to be sprayed by the hose. And the hose is actually a massage on their shell. If you spray it, look at this, he's gonna come right over to us as soon as he starts spraying. He's gonna get closer because they absolutely love to be sprayed on their neck, on their feet, and all over their shell because they actually have feeling on their shell. Their spine is fused to the top of their shell right where I'm spraying the water. So they have full feeling in their shell and by spraying them down, it helps them cool off and it's like a massage. So I don't know if you guys can hear it right now, but if we stay really silent in the distance, I can hear Noir the Jaguar making his Jaguar noises because he knows it's feeding time. So now that we got to hang out with our tortoises, we're gonna head to the meat room, we're gonna grab Noir's food, and we're gonna go feed him. Okay, we're here in our carnival room. So this is where we do all of the meat prep for the cats. We got all their bowls, we've got all their vitamins pre-mixed out, we've got our prep table, and right here in the fridge, we have gotta find Mr. Noir's food. So Noir's actually getting a lighter meal today. He's getting about half the food he normally gets. So he's got about three pounds of food in here, actually about two and a half pounds of three pounds of food. It's gonna be perfect for this Jaguar. So we gotta close our fridge. We're gonna head out and we're gonna go feed him. Noir, what's up, buddy? So Noir is ready for his food. You guys hear that noise? Ooh, 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 ooh. Who's your happy Jaguar? Who's your happy guy? What's up, bud? So Noir, as you can see, is an absolutely massive Jaguar and he is ready for his food and he's ready at the lockout. So that's why Noir is so excited right now because he knows it's feeding time and we've got to get him fed. So we got to take off one of our braces. We got this door super secure with multiple braces. We got one brace right there. We got a second brace and we'll be in there in just a second. One minute, 37 seconds later. All right, buddy. We got your food here. So we got all of Noir's food on his special custom-made feeding plate. So we got chicken, beef, and special big cat vitamins on today's menu. And this Jaguar is ready to eat his food. He smells it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come here, we're gonna lock up all the doors, and we're gonna let him in through his lockout. All right, Mr. Jaguar, we're gonna let you in in three, two, one. Go on in, boy. 
There we go, munching on the chicken and the beef right away. That's exactly what we want to see from our beautiful Jaguar boy. So, what we got to do now is we got to fully lock up his lockout area. We got two different locks on there. And right now, he's going to eat his food. Look at this guy. Oh, that's some good stuff. And right now, we found some of Noir's turds. So right now we're actually gonna come and we're gonna start picking up his poop. So this is something we do every single day, 365 days a year. We shift Noir and while he eats, we come and pick up his poop. And that's what it takes to be a zookeeper with these big cats. All right, bud, you ready to go in? Go on in, buddy. So Noir's back in his enclosure. Now that he's back in, we're actually gonna lock him back down and then we're actually gonna head in ourselves. So we have a double lock system on his lockout door. That's way we know that it's nice and secure. So. We got that right there, there we go. Look at that, nice and secure. We're in with Noir right now and he is playing with one of his locks. That's one of many enrichment items that we give him. And look at those big old Jaguar teeth. This boy is absolutely incredible. And it's an amazing relationship that him and I have. I'm the only one that's able to work free contact with this Jaguar kid because I have raised him since he was 30 days old. And we're just gonna give him some pets on the head. Look at him. Look how nice he is. He's just like a big old dog and he just wants to hang out with me. So he's gonna give me his butt and his big old tail. And he's just gonna kind of sit down right here. And that's how you know he's relaxed when he's calm enough to sit down and put his back to me. Because if you know anything about these big cats, these big cats like to stalk their prey. And if they sense any kind of a threat, the last thing they're gonna do is give you their back. Look at this big old Jaguar. And if he lets me right now, we're actually gonna look at his canines. Look at those big old Jaguar canines. Look at them. Ah, you got the big teeth. Look at them. They're so big and so nice. Can I see them? So the Jaguars have the strongest bite pressure per square inch of any big cat. So if you see those big old teeth right there, he's got the jaw pressure of over 1500 PSI. All right, guys, we are headed in to catch Sid the sloth. Now, Sid is already waiting at the door this morning. She is waiting for her food. Because we're taking her to the vet, we had to pull her food and water at midnight last night because we might actually have to sedate her to actually do this exam. So we're gonna head on in right now. So we got our big old crate right here. We're just gonna keep our crate here. We've got Mr. Suki here. We've got the entire sloth gang here today. And this right here is Sid the sloth. This is our mother sloth. She's absolutely amazing. And the reason again why we're taking her is because there's a little something on her nipple and we're suspecting that she's pregnant again. So we wanna get it checked out. So if she does have a beautiful baby this spring, we wanna make sure she's happy, she's healthy and she's ready to go. And right now we've got her bowl. Now we're not gonna give her this food, but we're gonna use this to actually lure her so we can actually catch her. Hey, oh, look at that, look what we got here. So she's smelling the zucchini and we're just gonna kinda lure her down just like this. We've also got Mr. Suki here. So we're gonna actually give this to Suki. Suki, come on, take it, please, take it. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna get her to come up just like this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tuck her elbows. That's what we have to do to actually catch a sloth. Now, there's no easy way to do this, but in my opinion, this is the best and fastest and easy and the least stressful way to catch a sloth. And right now we're just gonna get her right inside of her transport crate, just like this. And there she goes, she wants out. I'm sorry, mama, but that is the best way to catch a sloth. If we were to try to lure her in the crate, she's never gonna go in there. I've never had sloths that like going in crates, but right now, we got her in the crate and she is ready to go to the vet. I'm sorry, mama, don't worry. You're gonna get all the treats when we come back. All right, we got our big old sloth in the truck and she is loaded in just like that. Fellas, we are finally on the way to the vet. We got about a 30 minute car ride. So as soon as I saw that there was something up with Sid and her nipple, I knew we had to call the vet. I knew we had to get an appointment right away. And that's exactly what we did. We got the soonest possible vet appointment because that's what it takes when you have got exotic wildlife. You gotta go to the vet at a moment's notice and you gotta be ready to actually spend the money to do it. If you can't spend the money and afford to do it, then you should not own exotics at all. This is gonna be every bit of a thousand dollars at the vet office between the blood work, the sedation that we're most likely gonna be doing. If we send out any cultures, this is every bit of a thousand dollars. But thankfully we have really high standards for our animal care so we don't really have too many issues that come up. A couple of times throughout the year we have to take in animals for emergencies like this, but it seems to be something pretty minor. But the only way to tell is to get to the vet and have them take a look. One hour later. We made it guys, we made it to the vet office. Sid is in her crate right now and it looks like she's sleeping over in the corner. Right now we're just waiting for Dr. Harris to come in the room and we're gonna be taking this sloth out. We're gonna be doing an exam and I can't wait for all of you to see. What's up, doc? 
Good morning. Good morning. How, How you doing? You're doing this again. Yeah, we're doing it again. We're here. We're filming. We're doing it. How are you doing? How are you doing? Hey, what's Wait, up? We're out of How are you? Nice Hi, to meet you. Nice to meet you too. All right, we got a sloth here today. It's got something on its nipple. I'm feeling kind of slothful. If you want yeah. to know the truth. Well, she's a little. She's a little tired. <laughs> What's the plan of action? Well, go back and tell me what the problems are. Um, formulate a plan. I think she's just got something, some little growth on her nipple, some kind of something. It's just enlarged. Behavior good, appetite Behavior good, already. appetite good. Maybe she's pregnant. I don't know. She's feeling a little swollen. Okay. Well, then we start by examining her. Right. So, get her out. All right, let's do it. <laughs> I need, where's your hand? I need this hand. All right, we got her tucked. That's how we catch a sloth. Very good. Oh, she looks nice. Yep. Yeah. She's a little underweight. Though. Better this way. Yeah. But this works. Right, not bad. Is she smiling at me? She's smiling. Yeah, she I don't wants think to bite so. you. <laughs> <laughs> All the way down to the left, to the right. Injectables, it takes a long time to go out, a long time to wake up. Mm -hmm. It's riskier, for sure. The isofluorine is kicking in, which means Sid the Sloth is now asleep and we can do a safe exam without the possibility of being bitten or scratched. And if you know anything about sloths, a bite from a sloth would mean an instant infection in a hospital visit. So we're taking all the necessary precautions so that does not happen. So right now we've got the exam light overhead and we're gonna locate the crusted over nipple. And right over here, you can see it, it's discolored and that is not how it should look at all. It should be a soft pink color, just like the skin. And right now, Dr. Harris is feeling the chest cavity as well as the nipples for any abnormalities and anything that might need to be checked out on. So right now you can see this nasty, weird, strange crust that's over on her nipple. So it's really just kind of peeling off and almost looks like a scab, like maybe something bitter or something is irritating it. It's just it's kind of scabbed over. Um, there. That's what it is. Um, there's nothing really remarkable going on underneath. It's pretty healthy looking tissue. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Hi, Mike. It's very healthy yeah. looking. There's no exudate. Mm -hmm. And then the other nipple has a little bit of... It's got the same thing going on, just not as extreme. Yeah. So right now, Dr. Harris is trying to locate a vein on Sid's leg so we can actually do some blood work, which would be a baseline for her health. So we've located a vein and right now we're getting a needle out so we can safely draw some blood. This is something we haven't done this year yet and this is something we do for all of our animals once a year. All right, so right now we think we've located a vein but the only thing is the sloth hair makes it a little bit difficult to find. So we're going in with the needle right now. We're trying to find the vein and we have no luck. Guys, this is gonna be a little bit tricky. Right there, it feels that right under the... One hour later. All right, Doc, we're back in the room. What's, uh, what's the consensus here on our sloth? The sloth's done with the sedation. He's recovering in the crate. Yeah, the, uh, the consensus, the semi-educated opinion, is that you've got some crusting going on in the skin probably normal consequences of being in a habitat where they drag themselves around and the, the nipples, the skin is subject, it is exposed to things that can irritate it. Once we removed the little crust, I hesitate to even call it a scab because- But now she's waking up, we're just making sure she's good. So she's starting to use her claws again, use her grip. And I think she's gonna be just all right. And well, that, my friends, is going to end today's episode. I hope all of you guys did enjoy watching today's sloth emergency. Thankfully, nothing was seriously wrong with Sid, and it was just some minor crust. But we did all of the necessary precautions to make sure she was okay. We took her to the vet. We did some blood work, and Dr. Harris did the best exam that he could. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below, what was your favorite part of today's video? I also want to tell you guys that we got some fire merch on the website. 
We got our Redland Conservation hats. I know Christmas is coming up and Black Friday. So we're gonna be having a Black Friday sale. We're also gonna be dropping some new merch for Christmas. So guys, stay on the lookout for that. And if you guys are not yet subscribed yet to me and you wanna see the rest of my crazy animal family, well guys, all you have to do is go right now and subscribe below.